Uh, first thing, we, we have kind of heavy hearts after hearing of uh, Tyler Butterfield with the band and the accident that happened for the game. And then um, last night with Coach Osborne's brother. Um, never want to see anybody go before their time. And our, our hearts and thoughts and prayers are with both of those families. Um, you know, early on, I thought they looked really good. Um, there for a while, it almost looked like they were toying with some teams and uh, got by. And when you watch a Purdue game, um, uh, defensively, they really dominated Purdue for a long time, minus a few plays. And Purdue hit a few plays in the first half and stayed in the game on defense. And the dam kind of broke at the end, but. Uh, there's no question they're really talented team, really well coached team, um, and I don't have any doubt we're going to get their best shot after uh, a loss two weeks ago and two weeks of practice and grinding. Uh, they got their backs to the wall, and our guys know they have to be ready because we're going to we're going to see the best of what they got. Mo mentioned the first quarter uh, and how important that's going to be. Um, if you talk to your players about the, the importance of starting fast and how valuable do you think that could be in a setting like that? That'll be valuable, uh, particularly with the circumstances of this game. I, I I foresee their team coming out and playing with their hair on fire right at the beginning. Um, I think we need to be able to withstand that initial surge and play well at the beginning. So how, how do you feel about your defense? Uh, yeah, about three turnovers and uh, your starters allowed only three points against Bethune, but Bethune was able to gouge you guys on a few plays. Uh, just kind of where are you with where the defense is and, and how they, they, they kind of stacked up going into a game like this? We're growing, just like I've said all year. Um, there's a couple plays. Uh, the, the one long pass play, uh, we played a, a stack wrong, and um, the guy covering the receiver got rubbed. And those are experience things you can't let happen. Um, but we've given up too many big plays. It was good to see the turnovers, uh, guys starting to make plays on balls. But this is all a process. There's growth. Um, I think our defense has continued to get better. Um, you know, we're playing an elite team on Saturday. Uh, we've played several, several teams that are really good and for sure one elite team already this year, and we weren't ready for that challenge uh, earlier in the year. So I, I hope our team's a, a lot more prepared and a lot more confident going into this separate themselves from other teams. So Nebraska, when you were a player, then you, you kind of watched that and were part of it at Oregon. What what was it about Nebraska and Oregon that helped them separate from the pack, and how is that maybe similar to, to what Ohio State's done under Meyer um, since he got there? I don't want to comment much on Ohio State, but um, you, you start to get used to doing the things that make you a winner. Win, winning becomes a habit. Um, the expectations are that you're going to win. And when you have a team like that, you always seem to find ways to get it done. Um, I've seen it happen on a lot of teams I've been on that when you go in not just believing you're going to win, but knowing you're going to win, um, you find ways. And you know, any team, I don't care how good you are, you're going to have a few close games every year. And if you're not an elite team, you're going to have a bunch of close games. And finding a way to win those games usually comes down to little details and and confidence that you can get it done. Um, having been in those situations before and being able to deal with the pressure is a big part of it. And we're learning to do that now. Um, it'll, there'll be a time in the, in the near future where, where our guys expect to win those games and um, make the plays that, that we need to to win the majority of games we're in that are close. Is there, when you're a part of a program like that, could you sense the opponent knowing or having a psychological advantage over them because they knew that you knew that you were gonna you were gonna eventually win that game? Yeah, I mean, when I was a player here, there were several teams that we'd beat double digit number of times in a row. And anytime you go into a game like that, even if even if you play well and got a chance, 
in the back of your mind somewhere you're thinking when when is it going to happen when when is this going to happen that they take over and win again I've, I've been on um, the right side of that a lot and uh, sometimes it's it just happens because of everybody's mentality and um, good teams get there and uh, we're building it to try to get to that point. A few players said they've seen better off-field discipline in recent weeks translate to better on-field discipline. Have you, have you seen that too, kind of off the field, just improvement of the accountability and all that? It's gotten a lot better. Yeah, newsflash, when guys are doing things the right way, we win more games. Uh, <laughs> The, the guys, they get it now, and um, uh, you know, we're not asking anybody to do anything crazy. We're asking them to be where they're supposed to be and be on time and, and do the right things. And what's crazy is when you're doing that, football gets more fun, life gets more fun. Um, cutting corners and finding ways around things and uh, not being reliable uh, isn't a good way to be successful on the field or off. And uh, those habits have to be learned. Uh, either when you're young or when you're in college or when you're an adult. And as a team, uh, that's probably where I've seen the most growth is guys are under, starting to understand that when they have a responsibility, they need to live up to it and be where they're supposed to be. What have you seen out of Braxton <coughs> Clark? I think he had a decent day Saturday just as a young player and how he's, he's evolved. Yeah, Braxton's a guy I think has a, a ton of talent and a huge upside for us in the defensive backfield. Um, you know, we thought with him it might take a year for him to get there. Uh, he's come along at least as fast as we thought he would. So uh, we got high hopes for him going forward the rest of this year and definitely for uh, next year. Playing at Wisconsin and Michigan, how will they get a guy like Adrian ready for maybe what he'll see Saturday? Well, uh, he, he's played in some tough environments. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of pressure on a Nebraska quarterback. I've lived that. Uh, playing in those loud stadiums against really good teams, uh, he's already gotten a chance to do that. Um, he's going to get another chance Saturday because we're playing in a, a you know, great place to call, play college football in a loud stadium uh, against a really good team. So, um, you know, the beating he took in Michigan, I hope it never gets worse than that for him in his career. And... Um, I think he's going to be prepared for it, and and on top of that, he's going to be a lot healthier than he was going into that one. So um, I, I think he'll be ready, and I think the whole team will be ready. How did he hold up during that Michigan game? What did you see from him during the course of that game, the first half? I saw a fighter. Uh, he was trying. Um, you know, we just didn't execute around him very well, and. Uh, you know, a quarterback, and it takes a lot of the hits when other people uh, miss assignments. And um, we, we need to be better around him. We've gotten better around him, and that's helped him to improve his play. Uh, as well as he's been playing, a lot of the credit for that goes to better play up front, uh, receivers, running backs, all up in their game. And um, again, the quarterback looks great when everybody around him plays well. and. Uh, he's the one that usually takes the blame when, even when other people around him aren't playing well. So, as Adrian goes, our offense will go, and it'll be that way for a while around here. How you guys? How, what kind of progress do you think you've made in some of those quick passes? That, that's a staple in your offense, whether it's to the back or the receiver. How, how have your receivers, and Adrian, and blocking improved over the course of the season? Yeah, I, I think that's an area we have gotten better. Um, you know, our. our Perimeter game needs to be better, and I think the blocking has improved. Still not where we want it to be, but we need to be able to get the ball on the perimeter and get yards, um, and that's gotten better. Uh, I think what's really improved is our Adrian's ability to fit balls into tight windows. Some, some of the throws he's made uh, lately in the red zone and even out in the field, uh, getting rid of the ball quick and knifing it into guys, um, that makes you just more efficient. And when you're playing a really good team, the windows are going to be small. And uh, you got to be able to get the ball out on time and into the perfect spot. And uh, early in the year, guys kind of had to be really open for him. Uh, now he's starting to see things and anticipate them, and uh, the ball's getting on top of receivers on time and in smaller windows. You talked about liking the approach since at least after the Purdue game. You see winning two games, where does that show up with the guys the most over a, a week of preparation? You know, it's crazy. If you come out to practice the last 
five weeks probably. I don't know if you'd see a difference um, between having won the week before and not. And I think that speaks to the character of the guys we got, that they're coming back and going to work. There's no uh, pouting after a loss. There's no patting themselves on the back after a win. Uh, they just come back, enjoy being around each other, and go to work. And we started this week off really well too. Yeah, we're right on track. Uh, we're going to sign a bunch of guys. I don't know the exact number yet, but um, if we sign as many as, as we possibly can with the initials we have, I still don't know if we'll get to 85 scholarships next year. Uh, in fact, I don't know if we can get real close to it. So uh, we're on the hunt. I like where we are right now. I like a bunch of the other guys that we're in the game with and have a really good shot at. And uh, the coaches have been doing a good job balancing their time of working with the team and working their butts off in recruiting to to help add to the talent we have here. Do you have a good guess, or did you get a sense from the first year with the early signing day of like what percentage is still going to be out there, you think, after that? You, you never know. Um, I, I kind of think it will be a lower percentage of prospects left after s the first signing day than last year, but that's just a guess. Um, I think we're going to be obviously farther down the road since we've had time to work than we were last year getting here in December. So uh, whatever spots we have left, uh, We'll go to work on a few targets, and uh, hopefully that makes for a little easier January. Scott, uh, Matt Jersey gave quite a testimony to the walk-on program here in Nebraska after the game on Saturday. What are your thoughts about a guy like that from eight-man football to come play here and finally get his moment on Saturday? It's great to see him get, make that play. There's a bunch of guys that got out there and got to make plays, but that was kind of the highlight play. Um, he comes to work every day bust his tail to get better and make his team better. Um, when a high percentage of our team is, is kids that care as much as him, um, we'll really be somewhere. And you get that from walk-ons that are from the state of Nebraska that grew up watching this and love it and care about it. Uh, it just means more to them. And it's awesome to see some of those guys get rewarded. Hey, Coach, when you're thinking about guys who made a red shirt and did those four games in, do you Say to yourself, okay, we want to play these four in a row. Do you look at matchups to try and get guys in positions to succeed? How do you guys as a staff hold on saying we want to get this guy four games? These are the four we want. It's kind of been on an individual basis. There's some that um, we wanted to get in Saturday at the end of the game, and there was a few that we held to use the last four games. So it's, it's kind of on a case by case basis, and um, we're trying to do what's best for each individual player and their future and, and how that relates to our team and, and what we need. Um, but there will be quite a few guys that I think will have expanded roles in the last four games um, that's going to help our depth on special team as we get a little beat up down the, down the stretch and should add to our depth on both sides a little bit. Do you feel like the, he coached the running back and he evolved into kind of a divine you know, Maurice Washington duo? How do you like that picture? Is that, do you feel like it might have went that way anyway or not? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm glad it went that way because those two guys, given their chance, uh, have really shined, and that's made us a better football team. Uh, so I'm not sure if it had been a, a heavier position group with another guy or two in the mix as much as those two, if those two would have developed the same way that they have. But uh, those two are really good one-two punch right now, and I think it's benefited our team that it worked out the way it did. What sort of progress have you seen Washington make in the last four or five years? Uh, big time progress. Uh, now he needs a year in the weight room. Uh, I think you know he's really happy when he gets over 180. Uh, when he's 205, 210 next year, uh, as quick as he is, he's going to be really good. And um, I, I know Zach can't wait to get a hold of him and get that work done. But uh, you know he's just got a different level of speed. He's tough to tackle. He can make guys miss in the hole, and he's really turned in as he's learned our offense really turned into a, a threat for us in the passing game that we can use on with matchups on people. So um, he's gotten a ton better this year. We could see the the potential in him right away when he got here. He's gotten a lot better, and um, I think the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, to follow up on the red shirts, uh, DeAndre Thomas has played in just the four games. Is he someone you're looking to keep at four? 
um, and, and use a red shirt because of the injury he had? Yeah, we're going to try. Um, he could be out there playing right now. We'd have a club on his hand, and uh, we don't want to put him out there if we can help it without him being at his best. Uh, so he kind of sat down with us and the defensive coaches and uh, decided he'd prefer to save that year. Uh, he's going to be ready to play if we need him, but if we can help it, we're going to hold him out. Thanks, guys.